You know, when we, when we found the slope earlier, given the equation, it was already done for us, okay? And for example, you know, we had something like this, and you guys probably already know the answer, but let's say you have y equals negative 3x plus 2. What is the y-intercept? Actually, first of all, what's the slope? Negative 3, right? The number in front of the x. Real easy. You just look at what's in front of the x, and that's only because y is by itself. What's the y-intercept? Two. Again, that's only excuse me. That's only because y is by itself. For this lesson, you got to get y by itself before you can figure out the slope and y-intercept. Let me give you an example. Let's say you have negative two x plus three y equals six. Um, you probably well. Let me just ask you. Do you guys think that the slope is negative two? It's it probably, right? You would think so because it's next to the x, but I'm going to go ahead and tell you it's not because y is not by itself. You've got to get y by itself first. In the, oh, same, in the same way, do you think that 6 is the y-intercept? Yeah. Um, no. Yeah. no, y has to be by itself, okay? It's okay. okay. So let's go ahead and do that. So let me get you guys involved. What do you think the first thing you're going to do is to get y by itself? Add 2x. Okay, listen up, guys. Always add or subtract before you divide. Okay? Always add and subtract before you... If you can add or subtract, do that first before you divide. So what we're going to do is we're going to add 2x. And remember, if you do something to one side of the equation, you have to do it to the other. So in other words, you know, here's the equal sign. Since I did it on the left, I have to do it to the right. Now what that's going to do is it's going to cancel on the left. So I'm going to have 3y equals 6 plus 2x. Okay. The next thing, now what are you going to do? What were you saying about getting y by itself now? How can we get... Yeah, you have to divide the 3. So whatever you do to one side... You have to do to the entire other side. We talked about this. It's called the division property of equality. You can't just divide one part of the equation. You have to divide the whole thing. Now, what that does on the left is it does cancel these three out. So those are going to go away. So you're going to have y. On the other side, you're going to have 6 plus 2x over 3. Now, from this point, how can we figure the slope out? Well, we can divide both terms by 3, okay? So I'm going to break it down. Well, yeah, bef before we do that, I'm going to break, e break it down by each term. So 6 divided by 3, and then 2x divided by 3. Okay, good. That's a good observation. So we know that 6 over 3 is 2. The last thing you're going to do, remember we can rewrite this fraction. We've done this before. I don't know if you forgot or not, but basically we can take the x and put it over here. That's because the order in which you multiply and divide also doesn't matter. So it's going to look like 2 over 3 and then the x, like that, okay? So basically, you're just taking the x and putting it right there. And then there's one final thing. Or, no, yes, it would be, but for slope, for slope, do not convert to a decimal. Yeah, the last step, the slope, the x term should come first, okay? Why is that? Well, that's standard form, okay? And we can, we can switch these two terms because the order in which you add two numbers doesn't matter. So final answer is y equals 2 over 3, then the x, then the plus 2. <laughs> now let me ask you guys, what's the slope now and what's the y-intercept? Slope is 2 thirds. Why? Because it's the number next to the x. And the the y-intercept is two, so you guys need to be you guys need to be writing this down because you're not going to be able to do the worksheet. 
what's the uh, no? What what's the letter for y intercept? It's not y. B. Good. Okay, we're going to do a few more examples, but but it's kind of weird because if you look at the original equation, you know you, you really can't look at it and tell what the y intercept and the slope is. Okay, you've got to solve it out. We just found out that the y-intercept is definitely not 6, right? The, number, the numbers for the slope are in there, but you still have to solve it out to figure out, you know, that it's 2 thirds. Okay? So that's why you have to get y by itself. Otherwise, you can't just look at the equation. Okay? So that's what we're doing today. We're getting y by itself and we're figuring out the slope and the y-intercept. All right, let's do another one. Let's say we have 0 equals 3 plus y minus x. And we want to find the slope and the y-intercept. Okay? Is this in standard form? No. Okay, standard form means you got to get y by itself. This one's actually not too bad. So, so make sure you write these steps down. The first step is going to be to get y by itself. What do you guys think you're going to do here to get y by itself? Remember, always add and subtract before you divide. Any guesses? What's the first thing you're going to do to get y by itself? Um, add x. Yeah. Always get the x. The, the x should never be on the same side as the y. Okay? Never should be on the same side as the y. So we're going to have x. The x's over here are going to cancel. So you're going to have x equals 3 plus y. By the way, why is that x? Because 0 plus x is x. Does anybody remember what that's called? Identity property of addition. Whenever you add 0 to something, it stays the same. All right, what's the next thing you should do to get y by itself? Subtract 3, right? That's the number next to y. And it needs to be subtracted. So on the left, we're going to have x minus 3 negative. equals y. No, no negative. The 3's cancel. You're left with a positive y on the right. OK, now what does step 2 say? It says to simplify the other side. OK, so. It, there's one thing we can do basically to figure out what the slope is on the left. There is no number next to the x, so what do you put there? Good. So we get 1x minus 3 equals y. Okay, so that leads us to what's the slope? Not 1x. Yeah, the number next to the x. So slope is going to be 1. And then finally, we're going to find the y-intercept is the number by itself. And the, the sign next to it does carry, okay? So in other words, there's a negative next to the 3. That means the y-intercept is going to be negative 3. By the way, just as a refresher, what does slope and y-intercept mean if we were to try to graph this? Okay, no, this, the, slope, the slope would actually be 1 over 1, okay? The y-intercept means where it crosses the x, the y-axis. Yeah. So that means that we could put a point down here at y equals negative 3, and we could use the slope, which is 1. Okay, if you want to say it would be 1 over 1, we could go up 1 over 1 and make a line. Okay, again, we're not doing that right now, but uh, that's going to be a future lesson. You can take the y-intercept and the slope to graph the line. All right, let's do another one. Make it a little bit. Maybe we only need to do one more. Wait, yeah, but you're going to finish it on Monday. So you. But uh, yeah, let's do the let's do number one on the worksheet. Actually. Hmm. We've already kind of done one with that. The first one we did was actually kind of the, the most difficult. Let's do this one. Okay. 
Okay, so is this in is this in standard form? I mean slope intercept form, sorry. No, because why? Why is not by itself? So what can we do here? Okay, so no. Okay. Uh, you add 20 to where y y negative Let me explain though. I know normally we add and subtract first, but look, there are there are no other numbers that are being added or subtracted to y. So you wouldn't add or subtract first. You would go ahead and divide by negative 5. Can everybody see that that would get y by itself? Now, why wouldn't you add 20? Because you don't want another number over here. You want to get y by itself, isolated. Why would you not subtract x? Because you don't want x on the same side as y, okay? So that's why for the first ex for the first step when we get y by itself, we're going to be dividing by negative 5. And we're going to be doing the entire side, both sides. Okay, you can't just divide the negative 20. You have to do the negative 20 and the x, okay? So on the left, it's going to cancel the negative 5s. So you're going to get y. And I'm just going to rewrite the, the right side, negative 20 plus x over negative 5. So that completes step one. Now we need to simplify the other side. So that means we need to divide both um, the negative 20 and the x by the negative 5. So negative 20 over negative 5. And then the x over the negative 5. Okay, so first of all, what's what's negative 20 over negative 5? That's correct. That's 4. Okay, it's going to become 4. Positive 4? Yeah. Okay. And then, okay, I'm glad I did this example. X over negative 5. No, 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 no. no. Mm -mm. Good. Okay, that's going to help us. So she's saying there's a 1 next to the x over negative 5. Now we're still going to have one couple more steps to get this in standard form. Okay, now that we have the 1 and the negative 5, we can do the same thing we did before. Pull the x out front, and then the 1 and the negative 5 is your coefficient. Like that. Yeah, good. You're getting this. So, yeah, so then we swap, put the x term first, and the 4 next. So it becomes uh, 1 over negative 5x, and it doesn't matter where you put the negative to me. You can put it out front or whatever, and then the plus 4. Okay, so now, what's the slope? Now that you... Okay, the slope is, yeah, you can put the negative out front or wherever you want to put it, 1 over negative 5 and the y-intercept. Whoops, 4. Now again, notice how different that looks from the beginning. You can't just look at the original equation and know what the slope and y-intercept are. And again, I'm just going to draw a little sketch of this, even though you don't have to, just so you know why we're doing this, so that you can know what the line looks like. The y-intercept would be at 1, 2, 3, negative 4. And the slope is down 1 and over 5. I'm going to have to move this down. So that means we're going to go down 1 and over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Whatever that looks like, the graph is going to look like something like this. That almost actually pretty accurate.